Welcome back to Feeding the Family with Dr. Kristen. I'm your host, Kristen Saxena. On today's episode, we're gonna be talking about meal prep. We're gonna be joined by a meal prep coach, Elia Wahlberger, who's gonna tell us all about her one-to-one coaching and the advice she has for meal prepping for any family. Welcome to Feeding the Family with Dr. Kristen, where we help you navigate the challenges of feeding your family and learn about the role food plays in our health and relationships. Feeding and food relationships can be stressful, confusing, and even destructive. I'm Kristen Saxena, a pediatrician and mother of four who's been researching and sharing what I've learned about feeding for over 10 years. In this podcast, I'll share my experience and expertise to help our kids and ourselves with everyday survival tips for real parents. This podcast is about progress, not perfection. So let's get started. Welcome to the show, Elia. Thanks for having me, Kristen. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, I was super excited to get to do this episode with you because I've been very excited to do an episode just talking about meal prep specifically. Um, I've been a long time believer that a little prep can go a long way in saving you your time, your money, your sanity. Um, And I also have felt, you know, through my own life that what meal prep has looked like has changed quite a bit just sort of as you know our family structure changed as my children were born and have gotten older um just all kinds of things i feel like it it morphs and it changes so i was really excited to get you on because you are a meal prep coach is that right yes i am a meal prep coach and personal chef um here in new york city uh is where i live so um yeah, I, I I am a meal prep coach, which is so cool because I you know I feel like these days there's a lot of like coaching that you can get, um, which I think is a great you know I think people are looking to find people who have strengths and uh, expertise in certain areas and have them help them you know to kind of like live their best lives. But you are the first meal prep coach that I've ever heard of. So what does what does a meal prep coach do? What does that look like? Well. Um, you're absolutely right. I haven't heard about many meal prep coaches. And so it's, it is really like a niche thing to offer. Um, and I'm so passionate about meal prep and how it can help moms in general, but also everyone like professionals, anyone who's busy in life, which we all are, Mm -hmm. um, to, you know, take care of themselves. Um, so meal prep coaching is working one-on-one with clients um, to really get organized in the kitchen, to plan out, to help with meal planning, um, tackling meal prep, efficiency, uh, you know, tips and tricks on like how to save money, how to whip up quick meals with ease and no stress, just how to be prepared for sort of anything that could come about during your busy day. I think that, that's pretty much it. Uh, and I, you know, work one-on-one calls. If you're local, I could come to you and help you in person. Um, but mostly it's online. Yeah. And I guess we should mention too. So you have um, a big online presence. You have a website. I know you have an Instagram account and those are under um, the name Feed Your Sister, right? Yes. Right. So where did, where did that name come from? Um, well, so I have a sister, of course, and I also have two brothers. We're a very big family and we all love to cook. Um, and we were on a road trip. Well, I started a blog back in 2010, just sharing my love for recipes and entertaining and, um, and food in general. And it was called Feature Sister because when I was on a road trip and I had been baking and I brought like some snacks with us to the in the car, my, you know, I was like, I'm, I'm known as like a food pusher. So, uh, I love to everyone to like, try what I make all the time. And my sister was like, feed your sister. So it just became like a thing. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great story. And it, it really just shows like how passionate I am about feeding the people I love and also just my love of food in general. Oh, that resonates with me on so many levels. I also started a blog, I feel like years and years ago, back when it was like, you know, 
kind of new and cool on the blog spot situation. I did yes, the same I had thing a blog with, spot. Yeah, you had I feel like that was like the first time all of us like little secret foodie lovers were like, "Oh, yes. a place to put all of my things." And so I totally hear you there, but what I also love about that story is just um, you know, just the way that like all of these things relate back to what I see as like food representing so much more than just um, the actual food or what nourishes us, but just these family experiences and the memories that we make around eating together and cooking for one another. And even the little phrases that come out of, you know, these family memories that go on years and years later that are sort of these like inside jokes and become these regular things your family says. Absolutely. Um, what, speaking of, you know, family memories and being and just meal time in general like meal prep helps have a more stress-free meal time with your family you know you can sit around the table and talk versus mom or dad getting up every single second to get something or make something new for a child or it's great for picky eater like there's so many benefits of meal prep in all aspects of one's life even, yeah you know saving money saving time you know reducing food waste, having more family time, less stress, more organized, you know, all there's so many, the list goes on. Yeah, well, and that was what I was going to ask you because it was like, what what makes you feel like, like how did you become so passionate about the prepping piece in particular? Because I know that you, you're a chef, um, so mm -hmm. you cook for individuals, families in your area as well. When was it that like the actual prepping piece where you said, you know what, this is so important. I really want to focus on this. Well, so I've been living in New York City since 2003. And back then I was obviously I loved food always, but I would just buy, 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 you know, and I had a bigger fridge at the time. So and a bigger freezer. So I would just buy and buy and I would spend like $250 at the market just for me. Yeah. And I would waste so much food, but then flat, you know, fast forward to the pandemic, you know, I of course bought a lot of stuff to have in my cabinet and whatever in my pantry. And that's when really it like clicked. Like I, I, um, I have my signature workshop is called plan prep plate, um, which you have attended. And it, that's when that idea came. Like I, I couldn't go to the supermarket every week and I couldn't get certain foods that I wanted or needed. So I had to make do with what I had. And that's kind of the basis of my method. My plan prep plate method is using what you have first versus shopping and then creating your menu plan. So I kind of flip it on its head in order to save money and save time, even just shopping at the market um, and, and just being more creative and learning how to whip up meals without having to even go shopping. Yeah, well, and I think that has to really uh, be especially top of mind for people now as we're seeing, you know, the cost of food soaring yeah. more than we've seen ever in our lifetimes, as far mm -hmm. as I know. And so, like, I know a lot of people are starting to really feel that. And so the more that you can do to save money and certainly not waste your money and waste your food, um, in addition to just, you know, the the environmental concerns and just sort of the guilt and pain we all feel when we when we waste that food. I think that that's huge. Yeah. So do you um, um, do you ever feel like it's a little bit difficult to convince people? Because I think when sometimes when I hear meal prep, like I, I and maybe it's just like my social media feed and granted, maybe me not so much because I'm already obsessed with food and meal planning and all of that. <laughs> but like when yeah. I think of meal prep, I think a lot of people think of like, you know, like the CrossFitter with their like tidy little boxes of all perfect food, you know, and all the perfect containers and everything's like portioned mm -hmm. out and somebody just feels like, you know, that's overwhelming, that's that's not me. Um, do you yeah. ever feel like, or, or do they feel like, you know, I don't have time for that? Do you get that a lot? Yeah, I think, I think being, becoming a good meal planner and prepper it takes work. It takes dedication. You really have to want it for yourself, for your family, um, whatever your situation is. For me, I live and breathe it. Like I can talk about how to make chicken in a million different ways for hours, but not everyone's into that. So it really has to be like the perfect ideal client for meal prep coaching because they really want to make a change and be committed to the act of meal prep. I mean, it because mm -hmm. it does take time, but once you practice it, it will get less 
it will be less and less time consuming and you'll get better and better and better at it. And it makes it more enjoyable as well. So like it, it does take a good amount of time to really get in the habit of it. Um, but I also find that people, it's kind of like working out like, oh, I don't have time for yoga. I don't have time to meditate. Well, you have to make that time. You do have time because we all scroll on our phones and waste lots of time mm -hmm. and we watch TV, you know, all the things that we waste time doing. We have time. Everyone has two hours in their week to organize in the kitchen mm -hmm. if they want it, you know, and it's not for everyone and that's okay. But what you said about the um, CrossFitters and stuff, <laughs> I think that's the other myth that I like to debunk is that meal prep doesn't have to be boring and it mm -hmm. can be fun. I mean, I post, you know, stories of my meals and everyone's like, that looks so good. And, and I always say like, it's so simple. Mm -hmm. I mean, last night I did a Instagram live and made a fish dish that it took 13 minutes right. from start to finish. I mean, and it was amazing. Like, I can't wait to make it for my clients. Um, so it can be easy and can be fun. And, and to me, it's like the most fun game I can play. <laughs> yeah. Well, and so I kind of, you know, you do one one to one coaching is kind of a bigger yes. part of what you do. And I, I would like to hear what you have to say. But as I thought about that and thinking how, you know, I think meal prep can be different for everyone based on their situations and their time of life. Um, because I think things like you said, like it doesn't necessarily, I think we suffer a lot sometimes in society with this all or nothing thinking. Well, if I'm in a meal prep and plan, they're all going to be, you know, everything I eat now is going to be perfect. I'm only going to eat, you know, organic, you know, fresh vegetables locally, all of these things, you know, you start to think, well, if I do this, I'm gonna do it perfect. And, you know, to me, like, as I've gone through this, if you're just starting into something, a lot of times it's like, you know what, just prep the stuff you already eat. Like just just think, you know, and then if you're like, I want to add more variety, well, it becomes easier to add in a new recipe here and there, but you don't have to do a whole overhaul of your diet. And if it yeah. seems a lot of time to prep, you know, a whole week's worth of food, well, just prep lunch for tomorrow because maybe that's one meal you don't get takeout for and that's one meal that's better for you and one meal you didn't spend takeout money on for the week and if you get good at that you know you can you can build from there so do you find that that's a big part of one-on-one -on -one or what's so important about doing like a one-on-one -on -one scenario yeah um well like you said everyone's life is different and everyone has different routines people you know people with kids with allergies people um, who are always on the go, like I am, um, you know, people who are working from home, like there's so many different situations that can affect how you need to meal prep for yourself. So that's kind of why I never want to do like a group program per se. I always want to give like individual customized attention to my client. Um, but yeah, I think like, you know, I just came back from a trip and I didn't have time to meal prep, but what I did do, well, fully meal prep. What I did do though was wash all my groceries and I, I washed my parsley and my cilantro and my, you know, everything. So that like last night when I was ready to cook, I just had to chop it up and put it in the pan it, or in the blender is what I did. Um, and it was so easy. So I think, you know, again, it doesn't have to be boring and you can start simple, you know, even just like learning how to make a salad dressing or a few different sauces to reduce money and you know buying salad dressings that just sit in your fridge like mm -hmm. how many how many oh fridges my gosh, have my you seen door have, like, is just i mean and even still you know all those little condiments like yes well that's another part of meal prep coaching is like getting organized is like such a big part of it like knowing what you have you know uh, like for me a cluttered fridge is never fun so it, it stresses your mind and mm -hmm and you go into the fridge looking for something, you can't find it, you shut the fridge and you order takeout, but you have a whole fridge filled of food that goes to waste. And it's a shame because there's such good food in there. You just didn't know how to like access it, you know? Mm -hmm. But if it's organized and clean, it's so much easier to just grab it, you know? And then the other part is not only the meal prep, but also just like your routine, like your evening routine, like checking in with your fridge, just like little things that I have learned that really help, you know, stay in budget, reduce your budget, you know, reduce your costs of food. 
and learning like new ways to use chicken or fish or, you know, marinate something. Um, there's just so much like I can go on and on. <laughs> yeah. Well, and so now you also do, do you do private meal prep for people as well? So you'll kind of do like prepped meals that maybe they, you know, do the final steps, put things together, cook them yeah. up, that kind of so thing as I, well? Yeah. So I cook for clients in New York City, um, mostly families. I'll go to their apartment. I'll cook a full like three to four meals for the week, but that generally um, lasts them, you know, three to five days. And usually they have some leftovers so that they can eat it for lunch. But I do family style. I don't do like portioned out right. meals or anything like that. Um, and it's been wonderful. I've been doing that for almost seven years now. So, um, yeah, but I never really did it for myself until like recently. Well, and I think that, you know, because you know, right now I'm really fortunate enough. I've got some help at home and it's kind of a similar thing during the week. We'll get, um, you know, meals that are like prepped. And then it, and when the evening time comes, you're left to kind of put things together or maybe bake or, you know, uh, saute some things and put it together. But, um, and I think that that's, that's great. And that's working really well for us. But I think that now, you know, to me, I think there's lots of options. You provide, it sounds like a similar service. Um, but I've even seen like our grocery store seems to do something uh, similar where you kind of pick up like a prepped meal, but you still go home and cook it or sort of a lot of meal delivery services or, Boxes. you yeah. know, uh, meal prep delivery services uh, where yeah. people, I think, there's just a lot more options, I think, than there used to be. And I think for a lot of people might feel like, granted, all those things cost money. Um, but I I also think, you know, if it's preventing you from going out or getting takeout every night, I question how much, how much money are you, you know, saving or spending in excess? Because I know at least for us, taking my family of six out to dinner costs fortune, to be honest. Um, yeah. So I think things like that, like thinking outside the box and really doing the math about what am I really doing? Um, Because I think, you know, if you're spending a whole bunch of money on the groceries, on the groceries only to have them rot in your fridge while you order takeout every night, you know, you might hire a chef. (laughs) Exactly. Or, you know, or or maybe think about something along those lines. Um, So I think that it's just sometimes it's a matter of like rethinking your process. Is it really working for you right now? Maybe it's time to to try yeah. something new. Yeah, and I think, you know, New York City clearly has a lot of wealthy people, so they can afford me, but but for those that can't, um, and the ones that come to me that want me to cook for them are always sick of takeout, don't have time to cook, don't like to cook, want to eat healthier, and the only way to do that, even with the delivery, like healthy meals, those are boring and tasteless they're small. Mm -hmm. You still have to get six of them for your family, you know, and it it can add up. It's cheaper than me, but you can do it yourself and it's not hard. You just have to commit to it. Right. And so that's where then the coaching comes in. Yeah, no, I think that that makes a ton of sense. So, um, just a little piece of advice then, like if somebody's really just getting started, like they're like, I don't know if I can do this. Um, I assume that you get that sort of some people that are like, I'm super intrigued by what you're doing. I feel like it would be helpful. I just don't know if I could do it. What advice do you have for, you know, a parent maybe with a family that's just starting out? What's kind of the first steps that they can take towards towards this? Um, I think a few things. So one, I would say, you know, taking inventory of like what's in your pantry, freezer and fridge and cleaning out the fridge is like step one. I would say. Um, And then really the other thing I would say is kind of like just know, maybe write down like the the foods that your family eats, you know, daily or weekly that you know you need always. And then seeing if you can create meals based off that small list. Um, But I find that most families especially if, you know, like with kids and stuff, their freezers are filled with food (laughs) that they don't eat. Mm -hmm. And then whether it, even if it's chicken nuggets, or even if it's like Trader Joe's meals that you just throw in a pan, I would say stop, don't buy food for the next week or only buy like eggs and dairy and like fruits, fresh fruits and vegetables. Like I play this game with myself too. And I'll give myself a budget 
For me, it's $50 a week, no more. But I will not buy any protein. And I will literally for a month only eat the food that's in my freezer and pantry and get rid of any sort of packaged like dinner food item. And then you can start from scratch eating like the better for you options. Um, But you got to get rid of what you have and you're not just going to throw it all away because that's a lot of money Mm -hmm. sitting in your freezer and pantry, you know? Yeah. Um, So that's where I would start. Just like what I what I do with my clients is I'll have them do the inventory and then we'll go through the inventory and say, okay, you can make like a million meals just with what you have here. You're not shopping anymore. We're done. <laughs> like I love it. You know, I tell them like the, the truth because it's like, why are you buying more chicken? You have so much chicken in your freezer. I know, but it's frozen. No, <laughs> <laughs> but that's, and that's where the, the routines come yeah. in and the defrosting and, and the planning and the thinking ahead. You always have to think ahead. I really like that, though, because we recently kind of did an episode sort of about getting everything cleaned out. And I think that that really is key. And I kind of love this game that you play with yourself. It's like a puzzle and a game at the same time. Totally. Well, I mean, it, it it's saving you money. It's getting your house cleaned out, getting your pantry and your freezer cleaned out. And to me, too, that that really becomes the true litmus test. Like if I'm doing this game and I'm holding this up. What it's like kind of like the Marie Kondo of of yeah. freezer because you're like if I'm unwilling to eat this then it needs to go. Like I'm either need to give it away or throw it away because I'm not there's no yeah. point in keeping it in my freezer for eternity. Do not buy it again. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right. right. So like cleaning out slash, you know, if you're not gonna eat it, throw it away, you know. Condiments are a big problem. <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling that. I'm, already, I'm like sitting here thinking about like, I need to do this using the condiments because there's definitely yeah. like a million half half filled bottles yes. of sauces and dressings. And my, my, I'm definitely guilty of that. And I think same yeah. thing. It's like, if you're not going to use it, it's time to go. Right. Or like the other thing I do is part of my nightly routine is like condensing things into um, or or being very conscious about using that half bottle of ketchup in a recipe so that you can throw it away. Yeah. You know, like that's another game, just sort of using up condiments. I love it. I'm like, going to play. What this. can I make that's going <laughs> to use that game, that condiment, you know, for sure. Well, um, you know, last but not least, I really wanted to talk about you have a new ebook that you just put out called everything but the kitchen sink, right? Yes. Well, tell us I'm about so that book. About um, I have it here somewhere. I don't know where it is. Oh, it's up there. Um, well, it is an all-encompassing ebook, digital, um, about, it's 86 pages, I think, to be exact. It has 25 different recipes. Um, none of them are, they're not like outside the box recipes, but they in there, there's pantry staples, freezer staples, how to organize your kitchen, basically like everything that I, preach all day is in that book. And, um, you know, there's guidelines, how long things should freeze, how long things last in the fridge, um, tips and tricks, tools. Um, there's even a chart of like different recipes to make with like basic meal prep basics, like chicken and rice and, um, things, you know, a lot of people are always like, Oh my God, I didn't know you could freeze rice. Yeah, of course you, you buy. Know, you buy fresh. Yeah, <laughs> it's the same thing. It's cooked. You just pop it in the microwave and it's fresh again. Like yeah, you know, just like how to utilize your kitchen to benefit your life and and meal and make meal prep easier. So, would you consider it kind of a a a it's a guide starter to, guide yeah. for people that are really looking into getting exactly. into organized in the kitchen and start being a little more organized about their meal prep and cooking. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the other thing is I'm also selling it in um, in addition with my plan prep plate workshop record a recording like a replay so that they can really kind of hear me speak about a lot of the things that are in the book. So they'll get it from like two avenues, you know, two yeah. avenues. Um, and I think, you know, so far I've gotten great feedback on it and I think it can be really helpful again if you're really committed to it. Yeah, you could buy it. It could sit on your computer. But, you know, I think if you use it, it can be really helpful to get started. 
I love it. So then how do you recommend, how do we get our hands on this book? How do we, if people are interested in your socials or your one-on-one coaching, what's the best way to get a hold of you and your book? So my website's going to be under construction. Well, it's kind of under construction right now. Um, So that's not the best place, but the best place to reach me and find out about all my offers and links is in my Instagram bio. Um, The link tree has a link to the the bundle and um, also my one-on-one coaching and my newsletter is a great way to keep, you know, stay in the know about everything that's going on and offers. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's Instagram perfect. is where it's at. So okay. follow Feed Your Sister. I will, we'll put a link to that in our show notes for sure. Um, thank but you. thank you so much. I think this was really great. It was really fun to talk to somebody who um, is specifically coaching others in this art form of meal prep. Um, I think you really make it attainable for everyone. And uh, we just really appreciated having you on our show. Thank you so much. It was so much fun to talk to you, Kristen. And I hope maybe to come back soon again. Absolutely. Absolutely. And thanks for joining us for another episode of Feeding the Family. If you're enjoying these episodes, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. And we'll see you here next time.